Oh yay. The winner of the intro contest has been chosen. Yay. yay. Wait. <gasps> ah! Yeah, sorry for screaming for five minutes. I'm just gonna cut that out of the video. Hi. I'm Timmy. I'm a Delphosaurus. I know what you're wondering. Am I a cousin of Monolophosaurus? Well, no. Everyone keeps asking me that. No. Oh yeah, the, the seven days of science. Welcome to seven. Wait, this calls for a Benji Thomas background. No, I didn't actually mean Benji Thomas. Like, like you know, like the logo. What is that? No, I did not. Just, just let me do it. Uh, I guess they'll have to do it for now. J just put me in. Well, I'm a JPEG. Perfect. Start it. Just start it. Wait. Um. Welcome to seven days of science. I run the moment. It's kind of awkward. I will s- Starting off the news this week, astronomers have said that they have found the best evidence yet for a class of black hole that has been described as a cosmic missing link. Black holes are notoriously hard to detect and this black hole, now presumed to be of the intermediate mass class, showed itself more clearly to detectors by pulling in a star that got too close, tearing it apart and consuming it. The team hopes to do meticulous research on this particular black hole to learn as much as they can about our universe. Next up is the fantastic discovery of some very unique dinosaur footprints found in a deep cast cave. Located in southern France, the footprints were found on the roof of a cave 500 metres below the surface of a plateau and date to the Bethonian stage of the Middle Jurassic. Three trackways have been identified and some of the footprints are as long as 1.25 metres, making them some of the largest dinosaur footprints known from anywhere in the world. Not only is the time period they're from highly significant in terms of sauropod evolution, but some of the tracks are so well preserved they even display impressions of digits, claws and digital pads, proving how good caves can be at preserving trace fossils. Now over to Ben, who has... I don't know, just over to Ben. Thanks Doug. First up this week is the very exciting news of a new dromaeosaur, commonly known as a raptor, being discovered. Named Deneobellator notohesperus, this new species is very important in informing us on dromaeosaurid evolution, as it comes from rocks dating back to the very end of the Cretaceous, an age known as the Maastrichtian. Not only that, but it was found in New Mexico, making this the first definite dromaeosaur to have been recovered from the southern US. The actual specimen is made up of parts of the skull, as well as some elements from the body, and displays some very interesting anatomies that suggest this species was particularly strong at flexing its forelimbs and had a very tight grip strength. Additionally, the tail was very flexible near the base, presumably allowing the animal to be a more agile predator. Dineo Bellator has been placed as a Velociraptorine, and this indicates that dromaeosaurs were actually still diversifying right up until their extinction at the end of the Cretaceous. This is certainly a very interesting discovery, always nice to have more dromaeosaurs. Also this week is the description of, not a new pterosaur this time, but a new plesiosaur. Coming from the latest Jurassic to earliest Cretaceous aged rocks in central Spitsbergen, this animal has been named Ophthalmothule cryostea. It's actually a nearly complete adult specimen and has been identified as a cryptoclidid plesiosaurian. This is significant as not much is known about this lineage during the transition from Jurassic to Cretaceous, and a phylogenetic analysis has revealed a newly shaped evolutionary tree for these organisms, showing that at least two cryptoclidid lineages were living in the Boreal region during the late Jurassic. Back to Doug in the studio. Thanks, Ben. How? Yeah, well, that's it for this week's Seven Days of Science, so um, see you on Sunday. <laughs>